Hey everyone, Paul here again. Let's uh, we've got an iPhone 4S to repair today. It's just a screen swap, nothing special. Or at least I hope it's nothing special. Uh, let's see. Still get quite a lot of these because in the area where um, I live, it's a rural zone, and so a lot of people want good reception on their phones. And the iPhone 4Ss and 4s tend to have better than the more recent models, which is pretty interesting given the dramas that uh, the iPhones had with their antennas being held wrong in this model. Uh, or was that the iPhone 4? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, let's get to it. Hopefully this shouldn't take too long. The person's come in from out of town, so they're waiting for it. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of different screws on the iPhone 4S's, so I really need these little plastic containers that are marked. Let's me make sure I don't lose everything. Ugh. Bit of a mad rush day. I woke up late, straight away, into having to sort out customer jobs, pickups, drop offs. Yeah, it's not good when you wake up late. That's what I get for watching movies at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Whoop, whoop. Five. It's actually surprising how quickly you can forget the uh, sequence on assembling or disassembling these units. I don't know what I'm doing. I think I need more coffee at that. Normally I just drop off. I don't. <laughs> Uh, battery came out nice and easy. I'll have to fix that up. It doesn't look like it's sticking down properly. Oh, great. Just great. See this? Someone's completely stuffed that up. It's probably not going to focus. But basically, the head on that screw has been stripped out nicely. Alright, go get our special tool for removing that. Let's see if this one works. Ah, I hate this. Where this happens on the jobs that you need to get done in a hurry. Ah, oh, that's really stuck in. Right. What was the person thinking screwing it in so tight? I mean, seriously. If you're another tech, and you get something like that, you go, oh, oh that screw's no good, I'll, I'll replace it or something. But jeez, no. Let me just drive it in super hard. Oh, man. I'm going to try another pair of side pliers. I should actually put a little uh, curve or something on these on the tips so I can grab the screw head better. Come on, holy crikey. Yeah, that's really, really in. Great, this is gonna. I've gotta be careful. Yeah. If you can get the first turn in with this, you're on a good start. Come on. 
come on. I'm really worried about pushing down too hard. Don't want to damage that circuit board. Man, I'd like to smack the upside of the tech who did this. But check it wasn't me. <laughs> it's crazy too, because that's actually a a stud that's on the um, board itself. Nope, still not coming out. What the hell? Yeah. Okay, so that wasn't all the way in, so my guess is some jock strap got the wrong screw or cross threaded it and decided I'll use more force to get it in. Ugh. Right, it goes in the bin. Hopefully, now we've got to catch up on lost time. Well, I can see someone's definitely been here because I've got fingerprints. that didn't get torn off. <laughs> In the original iPhone 4 there is a one of these things that sits under here and it's almost impossible to get the screw out without it coming off the board. I've done it a couple of times but you sort of <coughs> grab it with tweezers from the underside. Yep, there goes the traffic on the road. Wow, everything about this phone has just been difficult today. That's been difficult. Right. Now this Wi-Fi antenna thing can catch out a lot of people. Uh, that it's a little bit difficult to dislodge, and often what can happen is people do it a bit funny, and they'll rip the connector off the board, like this RF connector here. Quite a few times I've had it, and it's just torn clean off the board. Uh, fortunately, you can solder it back on, but it's uh, a bit of a pain. It's not something I'd want to do today. The other fun thing is people forgetting to take this thing out. And so they try to pull the board out, but that's still attached. They'll leave themselves a nice torn circuit board. Right. Get you off. Oh, great. That. Right. I always keep my finger next to these when I'm unscrewing them or screwing them in. Stops the screwdriver wandering right off. And when the screwdriver wanders off, it goes and crashes into the electronics next to it, which is never good. What else have we got? Ah, the SIM card. Should have taken that out first. Anything else? I think we're good to come out. Yep. It's interesting when I first did these four S's, it was such a terrifying thing to do. I think it must have taken me a day to work up the courage to actually start working on it. And then, of course, I had all the 
tear down guides and everything else. Nowadays, I pretty much do it in my sleep. <laughs> Which is pretty true given that I almost sleep half the time. Lack of sleep. Uh, it's Otherwise there's a bit of a pain on the 4s and the 4s having to disassemble everything just to get to the screen. So I'm really glad they changed that on the 5 series onwards. Hopefully they don't do anything stupid and start making it hard to change the screens again. A bit like what Samsung's done. I don't know why they've turned it around and made it so difficult to change their screens. It's that bad that I've basically just given up. I won't do the Samsung's anymore. It's just not worth the risk. Alright, let's see if we can get this off. You're gonna need some yeah, you're gonna need some heat. Yeah. I like to heat these up and try to get them off without tearing the bonding strip from the chassis. Just makes it quicker to do things. It's also nice if you can avoid getting any glass left behind. It's such a pain trying to get the glass off. Okay. Let's see where we go now. Oh, this one's been difficult, naturally. There we go. Looking good. Yeah, that needs a bit more heat. Oh man. There we go. All good. We didn't get any glass. Uh, great. The home button's broken. So the most common fault here is the little guides, the keying guides, just break clean off. Yeah, well, I'll change that over. That's something I'll change over at the same price as a normal screen replacement. It's just part of the deal. I know there's a few other places that will charge you extra to do that sort of thing. And I mean, the home button replacements are actually moderately expensive. They're like five bucks each for the uh, with the rubber backing and everything. It's a bit ridiculous, but I can't seem to source them any cheaper in Australia at the moment. Alright, I've got to go get another home button. I'll be back. Okay, back with our home button. Ah, great. Now I need to clean this. No matter where I put them, I always seem to have my cleaners at the wrong place of the room. This is pretty much just normal human skin oil dirt mixed together. I just like to get it off. Yeah, it's quite a bit. Do the other side. For getting this stuff, I actually use about 80-20 uh, or 70-30 mix of isopropylene and distilled water. Now, the water just helps lift up any of the dirt um, and the alcohol helps with dealing with the human oils 
if I use just straight isopropylene, it doesn't tend to lift it as well. Uh, looks like they put those back in later. Okay, deck. Get a new screen. Oh, what? Can't believe this. Ah. Normally these days they come with the ear mesh already in there. And I've removed that one. Oh. That's uh, pretty filthy looking ear mesh, so I'm going to have to clean that. My goodness. This is turning into one of those jobs. So again, that's the water and isopropylene. If I just used isopropylene alone, it would not have got that dirt off. Marvellous. Alright. Turn that over. The only trouble with wearing these gloves is that everything plastic likes to stick to it through a static attack, uh, attraction. Come on. Uh, nope. Nope, aligned right. Try again. Good reason not to press down hard on these until you're absolutely sure. Come on. I've got to remove that backing. You get quite a few that come in with that backing still attached. And it usually causes weird compression issues, or yeah, not always. I can admit, but often you get bruising on the screen. Ah, cracky! Now this, uh, yeah, of all the ones I decided to do a video on, this one's just turning into one of those nightmares. Come on. Okay, that's in. And naturally, the other side. Oh, not. I don't know whether I don't get enough practice or what, but I used to be able to get these screens in and uh, slotted between the holding screws and the chassis. It's no trouble at all. But lately, let's seems like I've got to take the side off one, well, one whole side off, get it in, and put the sides on. Alright, that's sitting flat, so let's put all the corner screws in. This has got a little bit of protective um, adhesive plastic on it, it goes into the camera corner. So. You'll often find if you go to places that are rushed, they will rip that clean off. They don't care. I mean, it, it probably doesn't really cause any drama. It's just to stop chafing or whatever on the camera. But I do like to keep these things as original as possible. I don't have to rip something off or leave something off. I prefer not to.
when you do put these back in, make sure they're screwed down properly. Uh, often what can happen is the spacing washer doesn't quite sit flat, or there's an offset or something, and you'll see it, it uh, just doesn't look right, it doesn't sit, so this one's nice and flat, whereas this one's sitting out a little bit. What's happened is the washer moves off center, and it doesn't uh, fit snug with the screw head. So you just sort of spin it around a few times. There we go. That's better. Come on, come on, come on. Good thing I told this person an hour. It's going to be a couple of minutes beyond that, probably. I get paranoid <laughs> about the earpiece screen. A number of times in the past where I'd finished the phone and then realised that I have not put that screen in. Oh my goodness, you just want to scream because you have to disassemble the whole thing again just to go put that back in. I've seen some places they will fold up the mesh and try to jam it through there. And what often happens is a chip will scratch one of these corners and then when the phone gets hot or in the car or something like that later on you frequently will get a running crack out of the corner the whole screen has to be replaced alright let's get this thing back together the right way original pole. Come on. With the logic boards, make sure this little rubber buffer up the top here is in there. Um, a couple of them that it hasn't been in, what can sometimes happen is the circuit board tends to run up against the screen cables. I don't know if it really does cut through, or not, but I have had a lot of troubles where the screens misbehave if that buffer isn't there. Could have been coincidence, could have been actual something, not sure, but no point leaving it out. Don't talk them down so hard that they strip. Just get them to the point where it stops turning and then just add the tiniest bit of nip into it. It's not a racing car, it's not some waffle very big engine. Just a delicate bit of electronics. Wi-Fi is going to give me grief. <laughs> the glove. There we go. Try that. You don't want to force these things down. <laughs> What's going on? There we go. 
Don't forget the hidden one. Let's clean the fingerprint off that. Oh, for goodness sake. Come on, get in there. Don't forget, we have to find a placement screw for this one here. I should have a spare somewhere. Yeah, spare parts. Off and four, off and four. Off and four. That's really far from ideal, but at least it's got a proper head on it, and it's the right screw. Just a shame it's a bit messed up. This one, well, oh, it's got the battery to put in. So what's going on here? For some reason this one hasn't bonded properly. I'm going to add another layer of adhesive. easiest thing to do is just get a long strip of this is 3mm double sided 3M tape
Ich mehr du. One thing is, I didn't test the screen before I put it in, so that's going to be hilarious if after all this, I found the screen doesn't work. a bit of a clean too. I'll just see if this files up. Yeah, I've got the Apple logo. So at least this is better than nothing. Taking that away because while I'm cleaning this, it's going to come up with the customer screen. And that's looking good. This, on the other hand, is. I can't seem to quite cut through that gram. This is grease or something. Yeah, there we go. Filthy. Not the worst. At least it's only just greasy. So probably like I'm working on the farmyard or something like that. Much better than plenty of other things you can get on these fans. What I need to do also is check that the charge port is clear. Usually, if these things haven't been serviced in a long time or ever then the charge port's got a nice collection of interesting things inside of it. Uh, compressed paper, grass, all sorts of junk. Uh, we'll get this back on. This phone is working. Uh, push down. Ah, oh, for goodness sake. Come on. Come on. Yep. Now I need to remagnetize these tips. Alright, that's a pretty filthy looking underside. One thing I used to have people doing is when they thought the charge port was dirty, they'd get something ridiculous like uh, WD-40 or <laughs> I don't know what half the time, and they'd spray it up into this charge port here. And of course, what would immediately happen is the liquid would then wick into the display, ruin the display. So that was an expensive mistake by a few people. Uh, I can definitely see there's at least grass in there, so 
I'll go get my special tool. There we go. The special tool is a bamboo toothpick and I shave a bit more off so it's nice and slender. And then all you have to do is you just run it up into here. There we go, a bit of grass. Most common thing I find in there is actually compressed paper. A bit more grass. In fairness, this one's surprisingly clean. You gotta get underneath the bottom there. That's why I slice the bamboo down a bit thinner. You need to get on the underside, which is quite narrow. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, better check that it charges. Everything's good, in spite of those little dramas, and I um, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.